In this video, I wanna share with you one of my all-time favorite soups. It is a soup that is both nutritious and delicious. It is a soup of roasted winter squash and it is hearty, it is filling, it is satisfying. It's not one of these soups where you're gonna serve it before a meal. I mean, you can, but it is so thick and so hearty and so satisfying and kind of what I call comfort food that it's really sort of a standalone soup. You don't even really need anything else with it. Maybe a slice of crusty sourdough bread or maybe a side salad if you're extra hungry, but this is such a filling, satisfying soup that you really don't even need much else. So roasted winter squash, why squash? Well, squash is super nutritious, right? It is one of these vegetables in the yellow-orange uh, color families of vegetables, and therefore contains quite a bit of beta-carotene. And beta-carotene is kind of that color in yellow and orange vegetables. And beta-carotene is a form of vitamin A. And vitamin A is one of those vitamins, along with vitamin C and E, that are considered antioxidants and really, really great for uh, keeping our immune systems healthy. It's uh, another one of those really great vegetables to uh, eat periodically throughout um, the winter season. So what I do is I need about three pounds of squash and you know, the recipe that I followed years ago when I first started making this soup, um, I saw this recipe in a magazine that I subscribed to and I pulled it out and I made it and I instantly fell in love with it. And it's actually become a family favorite. It's been requested at Thanksgiving dinners and um, at other family get togethers. And it really is just a super flavorful soup because it consists of a variety of squashes. So you'll need about three pounds and what kind of squash you use is really up to you. So pick whatever you want, pick whatever's on sale, pick whatever you like, pick whatever you've never had before and then you wanna try, it really doesn't matter. Hey, and this is one of those things that I just love about cooking instead of baking because use whatever you want. I kinda of like that style of cooking. So again, use whatever you like, there are so many squashes available to us. I mean, like, look at this assortment right here. Here's some video I shot at a roadside farm uh, on my vacation in Vermont a few months ago, and there were just so many squashes available, I didn't even realize how many there really were. And some of these are just super crazy looking, right? I mean, I don't even know what they are, but I bet they all taste slightly different and all have um, a variety of different nutrients. These here are are more of the ones that I was familiar with, like the ones on top of the red curies and down below the kabocha squash. I highly recommend those if you can get your hands on them. But anyway, without further ado, let me show you how to make roasted winter squash soup. So first off, the squash. I have here an assortment. I have delicata squash, carnival squash, acorn squash, gold nugget squash, and my absolute favorite, butternut squash. Now, why am I using five different squashes? I don't have to. I can use maybe just two or three. I could use more. So this is going to provide a variety of flavors because each of these tastes somewhat different. You know, I think between all of these, it will the flavors will be well balanced and along with the other ingredients we need, I think it will be just an absolutely delicious soup. And for the rest of the ingredients that we need to make this soup, starting in the lower left, we're gonna need some fresh thyme sprigs. I mean, there is just nothing like fresh thyme in a squash soup. It is just absolutely critical you use that. And then I have some of my favorite Himalayan sea salt. I've also got some sage. You can use fresh sage if you like. I just happen to have ground, and so I'm gonna use that today. I've made some homemade uh, chicken stock, so I'm gonna need Need some of that if you're vegetarian you can use certainly um, a vegetarian broth um, instead I'm gonna use pepper I'm gonna need a little bit of olive oil you can use either a red onion or a leek and the red onion I prefer over any other onion unless you've got like a sweet Vidalia onion that you can use I like red onions because they are a little bit sweeter and milder but today I'm actually gonna use 
a leek and a leek is beautiful. It adds a great green onion kind of flavor. It's just super, super for this soup. I'm gonna need about six cloves of garlic. And then at the very end, I'm going to add some Fontina cheese. And Fontina is this great nutty cheese um, from Italy. It just melts so beautifully and it is a great addition to this soup. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to split each of these open. I'm going to scoop out the seeds. You can either save them and roast them if you like or toss them, whichever you prefer. But I'm going to need to do that with each of these squashes and prepare them for roasting in the oven. It's not always the easiest thing to do and you certainly don't want to take off a finger so be very careful just get the biggest sharpest knife that you have and just very carefully you know make sure you keep your fingers away from your knife your blade but you're gonna just come around and kind of get this in half and you're gonna do that with each of your squashes so once all your squash has been prepared the next is to put it on a baking sheet and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just put a little bit of olive oil on my hands and I'm going to just drizzle it on each of these pieces. What I want is to make sure that I cover this entire surface because it's going to be what touches down on the um, baking sheet. And before I do that, I'm gonna stick a garlic clove right in here and I'm gonna just make sure I tuck that under. And what that's gonna do is it's going to steam inside the squash and provide a little extra garlic flavor uh, to our squash. So just go ahead and tuck one of those in and put it face down ready for the oven. I have one more to hide in here. All right, so now we're gonna put that in a 400 degree oven for about 45 minutes. At that point, I'm going to come in and I'm going to kind of stab each one while it's in the oven and just see how easily I can put my knife through. If I can go pretty easily, then they are done. If they are still any resistance, then I'm gonna leave them in for maybe another 10 or 15 minutes. Because of the quantity, although they're not large, because of the quantity, it may take upwards of an hour. While my squash is roasting, I'm going to prepare my leek. And if you've never worked with leek before, let me show you how to handle this. So you're gonna just cut off the end. And then what I do is I make a slit in here from about kind of roughly right here and I make a slit all the way down and the reason for this is I look inside to just make sure that there's no dirt ah need to wash all right so I've gotten all the dirt out of my leek and I'm gonna just kind of reassemble that here and I'm going to just go ahead and start slicing this like so and it doesn't have to be very fine because this soup is going to be pureed. This will be a nice smooth soup, so there won't be any need. Now, you don't wanna to go too far up. These can get a little bit woody at the end, so I'm gonna stop maybe like around this part and just toss the rest. So I've formed up a little bit of olive oil in my pot, and I'm going to add my leek and just cook that for about 10 minutes, stirring. Uh, fairly continuously until nice and wilted. Towards the end of your leeks cooking, you might want to go ahead and put your thyme um, sprigs in. And what you can do is just sort of run your finger along the stems and then just break up the thyme that way and just kind of crush it in your fingers and start putting that into your soup pot so that these can break down a little bit as well. Once those are cooked down, you can add your salt, and I'm gonna add about a teaspoon to start. If you're working with fresh sage, you won't want to put in much more than two tablespoons, but if you're using dried, it's a bit more concentrated, so you really only wanna use about half of whatever it is that you're using fresh. Now is also the time to add our stock. and then just wait for the squash to finish cooking and then we'll be adding that to our pot. 
and your squash should have good color on it. There should be some browning on it from the pan and you wanna make sure that it has this because it will provide really good flavor for your soup. And so what you'll do is just pick up each piece and then start scooping out the flesh and you wanna just drop that right into your soup pot and do that with every single piece. Should be very easy to come off. And don't forget your garlic. You wanna take each piece out of its paper and if it has a little color on it like this one, that's perfect because that'll add a little extra flavor. Bring your soup to a boil and give it a good stir. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna get a tool out called an immersion blender. And this is perfect because it will be what we puree our soup with. And you don't wanna hold it at an angle like I just did. You wanna make sure it's upright like this so that you don't get splashes all over your kitchen. It can be quite uh, messy if you don't hold it upright. But this is perfect. And what you do is just keep that base down at the bottom of the pot and just go around in a circular fashion until you have all those big chunks nicely pureed and this is a couple minutes in and uh, it'll take you about five minutes or so to properly puree. Next we'll season with salt and pepper and then probably the best thing to do here is to put the immersion blender in one more time to just get the seasoning well distributed into your soup. And then we're gonna cut up our fontina cheese and put it in the bottom of our soup bowl and ladle the soup right over it. And what you wanna do is just let that sit for just a moment before you serve it to each of your guests so that the cheese properly melts. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it the old thumbs up down below hitting the like button. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, I highly encourage you to do so, so that you can be notified when future videos are uploaded, particularly if you click that little bell um, at the notification bar down below. If you end up making this soup, I would love it if you came back to this site and go down below into the comments section and leave me a comment letting me know how you like the soup and especially what kinds of squashes you might have included and how, what you thought of the soup. I would love to hear your comments. So thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.